So I've read in our two files here, we've got the monster and we have our plate as well. Now you can find these on my website, compostingpro.com, if you fancy kind of having a go at doing this yourself. And I really would would play around with these assets. They're, they're pretty good assets um, and, and they're just a re really good thing to practice on. So let's have a look at our read node here. So we've got a red, green, blue, and alpha channel. And we've also got this little dark green box in the right hand side here. So what does that dark green box actually mean? Well, what that is is basically Nuke's bringing something in. There's something in this multi-layer EXR that Nuke doesn't recognize. It can't put it in a in a depth pass and it, or it's not a motion vector pass, for instance. Um, so what we can do is if we go up here, you can see these are all the other channels we have in there. And that's what Nuke's referring to when it gives you that dark green box. Whenever you see it, there's some stuff in that EXR that Nuke doesn't quite recognize. So we could hit page up or page down to just flick through those and see those little clearer to see exactly what we've got, um, which is okay, but there's a better way of doing it. The foundry has given us a node. So if we write layer contact sheet here, like this, what we're gonna get is it's now going to basically display all of the values there. So it's basically gonna show us every single image shuffled out into RGB and put in this nice contact sheet. And there you go. So this is everything that's in this multi-layer EXR in those channels there, that's dark green. So that's fine, but Steven Spielberg might call you up at two in the morning and go, because <laughs> he's in the US and uh, I'm in Europe, so that's generally what happens, some stuff like that. So uh, now we've got this, kind of, like, let's say, so, okay, I want you to kind of change the color of this orange here. So you'd have to go through, page down, okay, let's see what pass that in. Well, we've got the layer contact sheet, which is great, but we need to see now the kind of label behind it, right? We want to know, okay, what is the actual pass called? So if we hit show layer names here, and I'm just going to bring this up a little bit, you'll be able to see here that now we can see, okay, look, I need to change the RGBA light group free. So we can go here, RGBA light group free, and there you go. Now you can see that information. Okay, that's the channel I need to change. Now, I'm not really going to be covering how to change channels today. Um, I'm going to be covering the general kind of grading and, and matching into a plate, just the first kind of step in regards to that. But that's how you basically do that. And now you can see that you've the pass that you want to change and you can now go in and change that. So when it comes to grading, uh, let's merge these two guys together. So there we go, there we've got our monster there and he's over the top. And we just need to do a little bit of setup basically before we can actually start grading this in. So let's have a look at our monster again. Now, what we can see, first of all, our formats are slightly different, as you can see, so we'd probably want to put a little reformat in there, just so they're now the same format. There we go. And you can see on the edges here that we've got this kind of, you can see it's bright, or oh, actually, let's, let's bring this down. So you can see here that it's this kind of gray color here, and it's slowly that gray color gets dark towards the edges. Now, in the real world, that does not happen, right? You don't look at a tree and go, oh, look, the edges get darker the closer they are towards that edge. The, the, the brown color doesn't slowly get darker towards the edge, right, on a tree. And, and that's the same with everything in the real world. So what is that? Well, that's basically um, an aliased edge, and that's just to help this guy uh, sit into the plate a little better, basically. Now, because of this, uh, when it comes to grading, Nuke's going to think that, well, come back to my analogy with that dark tree towards the edges. Uh, Nuke's going to think that this monster here gets dark towards the edges. But that isn't the case at all. So we just need to undo that aliased edge before we start grading this. So let's throw in an unpre multiply node. And you can see now, wow, okay, look, that's how the real world is, right? Like, it's, it's exactly the same color as it gets towards that edge. That's how things are in the real world. And it looks pretty jaggedy and crude, but... Again, that's how it would be in the real world. That's what those colors would be. Now, what the unpre multiply is doing, for those of you that don't know, is it's basically just doing this value, the red value, divided by the alpha. Then it goes to the green, divided by the alpha, and the blue, divided by the alpha. And when it does the red divided by the alpha, it then takes that result and puts it in the red channel. So you can see that these numbers change here. And that's because this is the result of that dividing, this number here. And it does that for every single pixel. So it just goes along and does it for every single pixel. So let's do a bit of this. So, because I might be lying to you now, so let's prove it with a, a calculator. Uh, so let's view this, and we're gonna work out what this pixel will be when it gets to that unpremultiply. So you can see it goes to that value. So what is it doing? 
Well, let's put the value in. So we're going to do 0.05170 divided by 0.26840. And what that is, is this value divided by the alpha value. Let's click this equals 0.1926. 0.1926 and then we've maybe got it would, maybe there's like some values after here that we haven't got in there but that's pretty close right so that is what it's doing under the hood it's just doing that and then it's doing the same for the green and then it's doing the same for the blue so that's all the unpre multiplier is doing now for those of you that don't know what the pre mod does what the pre mod does is it does the opposite so what's the opposite of a divide well it's a multiply so let's do the same thing let's pick the green value this time and we're going to do 0.18876, and this is while viewing the unpre multiply node, and multiply that by 0 0.26840, 0.05, 0 0.05. So that's all those are doing under the hood. One is doing a divided by the alpha, and one is doing a multiplied by the alpha. Now we've got our image unpre multiplied. If you guys wanted to muck around with your parsers at all, the problem we have right now is it's great. Okay, we've unpre multiplied by this, but if we go here, you can see we still have the alias edge on all the parsers in the image. So why is that? Well, at the moment, what we've done is we've told Nuke to, okay, I want you to divide the RGB values by the alpha. Well, that's not what we want. We want to divide everything by the alpha. And there you go. Now all of these passes will be divided by the alpha. So there you go. That's always important to make sure if you're going to be playing around with those passes or whenever you see that dark green box, I would always set that to all just to make sure you're unpre multiplying everything and getting it in there. So now we've got that. We just want to now finish off our setup so we can start grading. We're going to put a copy node in. And the reason why we do this is we want to copy in the original alpha from up here. And the reason why you do this is because you don't want to muck up the alpha. We're going to, in a minute, do some grading here and some kind of like adjusting around. And you don't want to accidentally screw up the alpha channel, which then screws up your edges and everything. Um, so this is just a really great way to kind of idiot proof yourself. Um, and let's say you've been doing some long hours and you forget something. Okay, now you can't screw up that alpha. Um, so then what we need to do is we then just need to pre-multiply that to then apply that cutout uh, back over. So to apply that kind of nice alias edge, apply the alpha to the image. And the great way as well, by the way, so let's have a look at this. So as I was, as I was saying earlier, how the pre-multiply actually multiplies the color channel by your alpha. Well, that's the reason, by the way, that all these values here don't change when we're pre-multiplying because anything multiplied by one stays the same and anything multiplied by zero ends up at zero. So that's why these values stay the same and all the fun stuff happens on the edges. Um, and the reason why these get darker is because anything multiplied by something less than one is always going to bring the value down. So if you multiply something by 0 0.5, it's going to half the value, which is close to zero. Therefore, it gets close to black. Um, so there you go. That's basically the setup and how we're going to be, what we're going to be using in our future lesson to grade this guy.